Hello and welcome to the latest Ask BR episode. We are going to talk about Tana Sendakutam and Sketch. Uh, most of you sent in questions for Tana Sendakutam and Naveen asks, uh, was a remake essential for this flick and why an 80s setting? I haven't watched the original or its new remake. Wondering which Hindi movie or any Indian movie you wish to see in Tamil with mass elements and fake nativity. Do you enjoy remakes or is it better to surprise you midway through a movie? I enjoy mo- remakes as long as you know the, the remake brings something to the table and it's not the same movie. Uh, but I think uh, you know which Hindi movie would be uh, with nativity and all. You know actually I had a surprise. I thought about this and I said Newton may be a good idea for this because see think about it. It's a very idealistic story. It's about a young man who goes into a strange zone and kind of has a victory of his own through kind of so if you strip away certain like a bit of tone, uh, there's a ready-made villain, there's a heroine, uh, you know, there's a lot of opportunity for uh, message uh, giving. So I, I don't know, I, I kind of thought that with, with major tweaks, of course, that would be an interesting thing to see a, a remake, a Tamil remake of Newton. Shivan Aranan says, what are your thoughts on Manoj Bajpayee's role divided into two, Suresh Menon and Karthik with negative shades and also about the stretched climax? Uh, are those the kind of things need to be done for stars in Tamil cinema during a remake? A lot of people had questions about the climax. I didn't have a problem with the roles of Manoj Pai being divided into two as such. I had a problem with the fact that Karthik had nothing to do. I mean, he's introduced as a very fearsome man in a scene where he makes somebody, you know, kill his own son. But, um, you know, after that, he doesn't really live up to that build up beginning. And that was more of a problem than the division of the role itself. Uh, a lot of people had questions about the climax. Uh, Saravanan asked the climax felt very abrupt. Uh, could they have stuck to the original? Bilba asked the end twist was the major positive with the original. Do you think it was well presented? And Shivaram asked what's your take on the second half and the climax? Also while seeing uh, the set portion of the jewelry shop, there's no nationalism in it. So I prefer the original climax of uh, Special Chubbies. Uh, abrupt is the right word to use here because the action block kind of comes out of nowhere. I mean, they're kind of escaping and suddenly they're on the seaside and there's a huge action block. The, you know, people come out of nowhere. I mean, why? Uh, but the thing is also that that Akshay Kumar can play an ordinary man, uh, whereas Surya, you know, all these calculations go into when a really big star is in the movie. You know, you have to calculate his fan base, his youth audience, the fact that he needs to be have a macho image. All these things kind of come and suddenly an ordinary man becomes a superman. That's what happens. So no, the climax didn't work for me at all, though I understand the logic behind it. I wish at least if you have to have these climaxes, at least write them better or build up to them better. I would say that. Uh, Haridharan Paramashivam says, what is your take on minimizing the importance of Nanda's character? Originally, Jimmy's role is very crucial. Jimmy Shergill's role is very crucial and it helps a twist in the end. Wasn't he underutilized here? I think all the characters were kind of underutilized here compared to the Hindi original because like I said in my review, that was more character centric. I mean, Akshay Kumar is a big hero, but he was still kind of in a bit of a character zone, whereas this is more hero centric. So the hero gets a lot of importance and that's what happens here. So I think that's why the other characters kind of feel like, you know, they got a short shrift. Rohit Arad asks, hello, sir, how do you see Vignesh Shivan as a director? Did you find anything cinematically? interesting in, in Tana Serendakutam. I actually find him very interesting as a writer, more than a director. I mean, in directorially, I mean, he's made only three films, so I kind of, I think three films. Um, out, out of that, I think, uh, you know, the the in the Nanum Raudidan and this one, I've kind of been very impressed by his, whether it's his decision or a cinematographer's decision, I don't know, but there's this deep, saturated look. The colors are very deep and saturated. There's a very rich look, not in a glossy sense necessarily, but it's just very rich and the hues are really nice. Uh, but apart from that, I, I really don't see much of a, of a directorial thing. I mean, he directs like, like competent. I mean, I'm not, I'm not talking about, but the, but the real, I, I mean, I'm not talking about him being a, uh, like, you know, the, that there is no signature at all. But what I really see is that I, you know, he's more interesting as a writer. He's a really, really good comic writer. Uh, you know, in, in Nanum Raudidan, even the non the way he structured the screenplay, you know, he'll show us some things and then he'll, and he'll you know, and, and a little later he'll take us back and then he'll show, you know, everything else that happened, you know, that kept happening constantly there. So the screenplay itself was, that was a very major part of the screenplay. And as a comedy writer, he's very, very original in thought. Uh, you know, like that, that the series of uh, Silence a Gun episodes in Nanum Raudidan, 
or here the way the Ramya Krishnan character is is kind of uh, used. Uh, you know, so I, I think he's more interesting as a writer. I think we'll have to wait a little to see how, uh, you know, he develops as a director. Anand Raman says, do you think the editing in the pre-climax to be exact, the scene where RJ Balaji speaks to Suresh Menon is inappropriately placed. The scene has a cut behind them speaking and Suresh Menon is talking into the walkie-talkie thing to Nanda and that was very odd to see. I don't think it's a mistake because the whole series is a series of, uh, you know, the whole scene is a series of cuts from one thing to another. Uh, if anything, I thought a couple of cuts in that in that whole montage, a couple of cuts to Karthik, uh, to uh, Kirti Suresh and uh, Surya, that was a little odd because, you know, I thought the, the character of Kirti Suresh needed a bit of a resolution that was really like, like a proper resolution and not just kind of something hastily included in this montage of the investigation and the people trying to dodge them and all that. But otherwise, uh, I would have liked better closure for that. Otherwise, I didn't feel much that was wrong there. And I think it's the same way in the Hindi film also. Uh, Aarti says, do you think there were quite a few lines left unfinished as in some loops were left open? Uh, I don't know if it was unfinished, but I got this feeling that Anirudh's music was used a little too uh, heavily. Uh, I, you know, this is probably the sound department's uh, decision. Uh, but you know, when, when, the, when, the, when the music director gives the music, it's, you know, it should be fitted in properly so that you know, the dialogues are heard sometimes. Uh, some, some, sometimes, you know, for style reasons, they, meant they would want a swell of music or something like that. But here, I thought quite a few places, I could not hear a few lines that were happening. And I thought that was the main problem more than the line itself. Manoj Krish asked, could you point out the logic mistakes in the movie? Uh, I don't know if we can look at the Tabul Mask movie and look at logic mistakes, but one hero versus many uh, villain fights. I think that's a logic mistake if you want to look at it. Uh, Krishnan says... Uh, I think it, this was part of another thread, but it was still part of the uh, Ask BR thread. So I'm just going to take this question. He says it's a chronological insistency, but there's another insist in inconsistency in the movie uh, with regards to Surya's attire and looks in certain scenes were too modern. And on the year out of look, well, what's your opinion on that? It didn't bother me much. I agree with you because uh, when you take a movie like Subramanyapuram, which is also set in the 80s, I, you know, it really brings back that era to mind because with the clothes, the, the era, the, the everything, the, the set design, everything looks so natural that you really feel you're back there in the 80s. Uh, here, it's, it's not the case, but it didn't bother me because I don't think they were after authenticity because the pitch of the movie itself was so high compared to the original film. In that film, had the, had the detailing been wrong, we would have felt it a bit. But here, the pitch was more like a masala pitch, so it didn't really bother me because I don't look for reality or realism in a masala kind of uh, uh, premise. HN says, is the glorification of the hero really necessary and why the references to Durai Singham ticket price increase for a film set in 1980s? Doesn't it dilute us of the period experience? Again, I just said, uh, you know, the great thing about the Masala universe is that that logic, realism, all these things kind of can be kicked out. That is logical logic can be kicked out if there's an emotional logic in place. Uh, I don't I don't really feel I mean, I enjoy the references to the racing because it was kind of fun. And uh, it's almost like if you want to think about it, it's like it's like Surya is seeing that cop Dore Singham getting an idea of a future role, you know, if you want to really look at it that way. But but it's just fun and I don't think it's 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 a deal breaker in this kind of movie. Uh, Ronak asks, in, in Tanas and the Kutum, there is a Varumaniram silver poster at a tea shop that symbolizes the era of unemployment. Story takes place in 86-87, but Varumaniram silver released in 1980. Was it commonplace to have movie promo posters seven years after release? Clearly, you haven't been in the 80s because... Uh, you know, the number of movies released every year was not as much as today. So there was a lot of time between the gaps and releases that uh, that the old films would come out again and they'd say Puttam Pudhi a copy so that, you know, you knew that it was like a like a new copy, a new print. So uh, that would happen all the time. So uh, it was entirely possible that Varumi Niram Sirp was re-released at that time at some local theatre for a, like one, like a West Mamalam Srinivasa type theatre and it was playing there. So I don't find it... Uh, like odd at all. Uh, Kesavan asks, in, in, how is nostalgia working for the new generation audiences? I don't see how nostalgia can work for people who haven't been through an area because, you know, nostalgia, the whole principle of nostalgia is that you remember something that happened long ago and if you don't have any reference point, uh, you know, how, how can you even experience or be part of the nostalgia? So I think that's for the newer generation, they won't have a problem at all because they're just kind of you know, uh, see it as a Surya movie and without any of these reference points. But yeah, it's nostalgia is not 
going to work for them. Uh, Venkat Ramachandran says the film is based in the events happening in the 1980s. So the logic also taken from the 80s movies, no or less logic. Okay, frankly, are we talking, are we saying that in today's era, we are suddenly erupted into an era or uh, like an age of severe logic in cinema? I don't think so. I think the masala movies are operating on the same level of logicness, uh, logiclessness. Uh, so I think you know the movie is kind of thing. I think the the problem is not a logic problem so much as the screenplay should kind of not make us think about the logical loopholes. That's the main thing. If the screenplay kind of is not perfect, then we start thinking about the logical problems. That's the problem, really, not the logical problem itself. Sudhakar asks, is there any reason behind having two movies combined in this episode? Uh, is it that both are not special or worth to give individual session like what you did for Vele Karan? No, that conspiracy theory is not going to work here because it simply happened here because both these films released and uh, we just didn't know what was going to release the next week. So we thought we might as well cover both releases, though not many people sent us questions about Sketch. Uh, you know, I, I thought especially about Vikram, I thought, uh, you know, we'd get some questions about Sketch, but, uh, you know, about his career and what uh, a, a movie like this could do. Uh, but yeah, but uh, you know, I, we didn't get any. So, but that is the only reason. The fact that both of these films released last week and we were trying to combine both. That's all. There's no other reason. Uh, Aridharan Parmasivam says, in sketch, he has a question about sketch. The twist and the social message felt force-fitted even though it surprised me. Director could have traveled towards the premise if they want to emphasize in the end. It came out of a sudden. What is your take? Yes, uh, it did come out of a sudden. Actually, the reason is very strong because you introduce a villain and then you say that uh, you, we are think we are think, I mean the audience is thinking oh my god I know who the villain is and this is the guy doing all these bad things, and then you're wondering where the surprise is because if the audience knows where the villain is then what is the surprise because there's no surprise of discovery of revelation of who the villain is but then suddenly at the end you discover that there's something else happening, but the point is the execution of the writing is really bad so you don't feel the I mean, it's a surprise, but not something that, that socks you in the jaw and says, Oh my God, I never saw that coming. You kind of never saw this coming, but it's not really a good kind of uh, a surprise. It's more like, a, you know, you just feel like, Oh my God, where did that come from? That's what the kind of... So the writing is not really leading up to that. So that's a problem. The changes... Uh, Prasanna Kumar wants to know the changes to the Anupam K role. Why? Because it's a different pitch and I think it's nice to have a flavor uh, where a woman is part of the team and uh, you know she's like again a middle-aged woman with a large family and things like that uh, you know and, and I really enjoy the joke where she's named all her uh, daughters the same way and when she sees uh, during the fake CBI interview when she sees a woman named the same way she kind of her heart melts and she gives her the job so I mean these things are done really well as I said Vignesh Shivan is a really good comedy writer he re writes humor very well so I, th I thought the pitch adds added something so I didn't have a problem to that uh, can't we make a mass movie lying in the grave why always white for leading star black and white is also okay as long as we see Rajni, Kamal, Vijay, Ajit, Surya on the black and smaller actors on the white uh, I don't know. Can we can we uh, see black and white films with Rajnikanth? I don't know because uh, they seem to think that uh, audiences won't like uh, things. Because with the exception of movies like Billa or Mangata with Ajit, it's very hard to think of movies in which uh, characters were like downright evil or you know enjoying their 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 thing. Or even in Billa, you have a backstory, right? So I don't think. Uh, I think the logic is. I don't know. If, you know, if only if you put out a movie uh, to the people, will we know whether people will accept it? But I think the logic is that people like heroes to be good and pure-hearted. I think that's why the problem comes. Uh, Baskaran asked, I felt Tana Sender Kutub should have stuck to the original climax. It was draggy and boring, all that unwanted action. Was it necessary to show Surya as the hero who did all this just for others and not for himself? Again, uh, you know, the, the BC centers, uh, apparently this is the accepted wisdom. Uh, they want larger than life things and you cannot have a muted climax like in the special 26 uh, Chabdi's movie. And also, remember last last time we in the Davani Kanavagala episode, we discussed how uh, Bhagirat spoke about MGR telling him that uh, you have to finish with an action scene because in the end, the audience wants to see the hero beat up the bad guys. So that logic apparently was ap applicable not just in Bhagiraj's time but also today because you have an action scene for the sake of having an action scene, hero versus bad guys uh, and even though the hero is a kind of a bad guy, a con man here, the, the logic is reversed and he becomes the good guy, all kinds of confusion happens simply because you cannot show a hero as being 
a selfishly motivated person. Rajesh Shah says special chabis was precise and less showy and didn't talk much about their morality or social inequality while in TSK there is this urge to justify what they do encompass all social evils and offer vigilante justice. Yes, the vigilante justice kind of makes this a different thing than the uh, makes this different from special chabis which was more of a conman movie. Here it's like you become conman. That's why I said in my review that it's a bit like a Shankar movie, a light-hearted Shankar movie because we move into the Shankar zone of you did this to me, you hurt me and therefore I'm going to hurt you back. And uh, you know that changes the pitch of the movie and the tone of the movie. Uh, is this the way, the only way to do a mass hero movie? I don't know. Like I said, unless audiences say they are willing to accept heroes in grey shades, we'll never really know, uh, you know how, whether movies like that can be made. Shubha J. Rao asks, when, when do you think we'll see quiet, chuckle-inducing humor in Tamil like in the Hindi? Uh, again, you know, pitch is different, audiences are different, and I don't think it's necessarily long to, uh, wrong to have uh, a different flavor of humor either. But yeah, it would be nice to see that flavor once in a while. Raja Selvam says it's a romantic storyline needed. It had no depth, no importance. Actually, it did not have much depth in the Hindi version either. Which part of the audience should they target with this romance? Kids? No. Families? No. And the young adults would rather prefer an outright romantic movie than this. Yeah, but what happens is without a romance, you cannot have songs. And songs become very important, uh, you know, to market the movie, you know, uh, build, uh, uh, you know, like, like awareness of the movie. So that's the reason that these uh, romantic tracks come in, even though I agree this movie did not need a romantic track at all and it was a waste of time. So... Gopi Surya Rasigan Ashwin says, uh, Gopi, I think, I think he's calling, referring to the place. TSK is a completely entertaining movie, but some people still claiming that movie is not good like that because it is not their hero's movie. Is this good for Tamil cinema to be like their own movie, hero's movie should be a hit movie, other should be a disaster? No, actually, this is not good. But, but you know, uh, unfortunately, hits are all that matter. You know, I've always wondered, why, do, why does the audience care so much about whether a film is a hit or not, right? I mean... Like maybe as a critic, I have some interest in it because it shows me some trends. Like today, people, this is this kind of movie is popular or something like that. But for the ordinary audience that just goes to watch a movie, why does it matter if a movie is going to be a hit or not? I mean, isn't it more important whether the movie is working for you or not? Whether it's, uh, you know, whether the movie is uh, like good or not, in your opinion. I don't know why this hit thing has come into the picture. And today, everybody is flaunting box office figures. People are like quoting box office figures non-trade people i'm saying trade people will be interested in all this so yeah uh, it's not good this comparison that you know my hero's movie is doing better than yours i think it's a little inevitable because you know you rejoice when your hero succeeds and all that but i don't understand this whole fixation of a box office numbers and i think you know that 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 kind of leads to a very fixed type of films being made and that's a problem uh vishnu mb says what kind of films do you like to watch from an actor like surya uh, the simple answer would be good films. Uh, a less simple answer would be a range of films. Uh, you know, because, you know, there was a time during that Nanda Pitamardhan phase when a Kaka Kaka would come and he was playing a grim cop and then you'd have a Pitamardhan coming after that in which he's playing this very exuberant light role and I, he really kills in that movie. He's so good in that film. Uh, you know, but now, and each role was very different. So he didn't have any heroism in Pitamardhan. He didn't have any you know, much, much lighter moments in Kaka Kaka. Uh, but, you know, but you miss that variety because today, because he's become such a big star and, you know, mass, that the, the one constant flavor in all his movies has become mass, 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 mass. So all, if he's a zombie, zombie movie, it's, it's a mass flavor. If it's a, a special 26 kind of remake, a con man movie, you have a mass flavor. So that has become a constant and it's become a little, I, do, I wouldn't say tiring because if you're kind of, uh, you know, if it's done well, it's done well, but it's become kind of monotonous and it would be nice to see him in a range of films again because he's a very talented actor and you want to see him, you know, kind of retain his stardom in a more interesting way. That's all. So that's the end of this episode uh, of Ask BR. We'll be back next week. Uh, we'll send out a note about which film we're going to discuss soon. Do tune in and if you like this video, do subscribe to Film Companion South.